Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Taya and this is Taya's Turning Pages. Mm -hmm. started with today's video I just wanted to address the elephant in the room and you can probably tell that there is a difference with my speech and that is because I did start my Invisalign treatment about two weeks ago so I'm still trying to adjust to this whole you know Invisalign thing so I apologize if you hear a little bit of a lisp in my speech moving forward but there's nothing I can do about that so by the title of today's video you can tell that this is going to be my favorite thrillers and horror books of all time I decided to film my favorite thriller and horror books because I feel like I have a good selection here I'm still trying to play catch up like I mentioned in my last video I started reading for fun again back in July of last year but again I feel like I have a good selection here and these books are my favorite so why not share them with you guys now this list probably will change in the future because I'm always reading new books and discovering new thrillers and horror books but for right now this is a solid list we have quite a few books to get through so let's get started the first book that I have here is Rock Paper Scissors by Alice Feeney so I'm sure you guys have seen this book all over bookstagram all over book talk and all over booktube because this was a very popular thriller when it first debuted rightfully so because it was a very entertaining thriller so this actually follows a couple named Mr. and Mrs. Wright respectively and they are having a tumultuous time in their marriage to the point where they're on the brink of divorce so to try to restore their marriage and save what they have left they decide to go on this getaway to Scotland and they end up staying in this abandoned church that has been converted into an Airbnb but they end up staying in this abandoned church and when they finally get there and get settled they notice creepy things happening inside and outside of the church so they hear loud banging and you know random noises throughout the night their dog is also barking and growling at things that aren't really even there and they just notice again spooky things happening but they can't pinpoint if it's something paranormal or if it's someone actually doing this to them and that has been watching them this entire time so while they're trying to deal with their marriage and really trying to you know figure things out once and for all they're also trying to deal with this impending threat that they cannot identify and the story takes a sinister turn I'm not gonna say anything else because this book is very short and I definitely recommend just picking it up because it is very good there are so many different twists and turns Alice Feeney has been coined the queen of twists and turns and I definitely think she you know is a good candidate for that title because this book delivered on that front especially when you get towards the end there are just so many things coming at you from left field that you're like whoa and you're not expecting at least I wasn't <laughs> so I was very very happy with the twists and turns as well as the ending because I just didn't see any of it coming and I think when you're reading a thriller that's what you're looking for you don't want to have the same cliche you know formula and ending you want something new something fresh and I think that this book really delivered on that front I'm also a huge fan of isolated thrillers like most people so I love when you know our main characters are stuck in a place where they can't get out they have to figure out you know a murder or they have to try to escape the murderer that is in their midst and again this book delivered on that front so if you like isolated thrillers if you like atmospheric and snowy and just really descriptive thrillers I think you would really enjoy this book Alice Feeney's writing is also very beautiful there are alternating POV and chapters within this book and there are chapters in here that are written in like a letter format and these letters are written by the wife so you really get to get a glimpse into her head and her mind and seeing where she is at and there are certain you know chapters that are very heartbreaking because this book does have heavy topics woven throughout it like um, cheating and infidelity as well as infertility issues so definitely look up trigger warnings but I just really enjoy the mind games that this book definitely plays on you. This is a psychological thriller in every sense of the word, but it is also delivering on that isolated trope as well. So again, if you're interested in all of that, I definitely recommend picking up Rock, Paper, Scissors. So the next book that I have here is Good Rich People by Eliza Jane Brazier. So I actually received this book as an e-arc last year in 2021, and it ended up becoming one of my favorite books of that year because this was a wild ride. So this actually follows a young woman as well as a couple, but Starting with a young woman, this follows a young woman named Demi who is considered a destitute but she is really down on her luck. She doesn't really have any money to her name and she's essentially homeless. So Demi is trying to figure out her next move and on the flip side of that you have a couple named Lila and Graham and Lila and Graham are very very rich. They embody the 1% to a T to be honest. They're not your normal rich couple though. Lila and Graham like to play these very sinister and wicked games and I don't want to give too much away. I don't want to get into the full synopsis of what the games are but just know that they play very sinister and wicked games at the expense of other people specifically at the expense of 
poor or middle class people. So Demi finds herself deceiving her way into the guest house of Lila and Graham and now you follow Demi on this journey of survival as well as just trying to win this game and outsmart both Lila and Graham at their own game. And the story pretty much takes off from there. So you guys have probably seen Gabby Reads talk about this book and she actually really enjoyed it which makes me happy because this book is really good. And when I actually wrote my review on this, this book reminds me of if Gossip Girl, The Purge franchise, and The Hunger Games franchise had a love child, it would be this book because it just has all of those elements wrapped up into it, especially when you get to the gist and the core of the game that Lila and Graham like to play on people. It is mind-blowing how Eliza Jane Brassier came up with this plot to be honest. It is very chaotic, very camp, very outlandish, and very absurd but it is so entertaining. So if you don't really like campy thrillers or if you don't really care for over-the-top thrillers then you might not like this one because this one has a lot of theatrics in it and you do have to suspend a lot of disbelief but it is very entertaining nonetheless. I flew through this book. I could not put it down because I just needed to know what was going to happen next and how it was going to tie together in the end and once we got to the ending, chef's kiss. It was phenomenal. I loved the way that Eliza tied all of it up. It definitely does play on your psyche. So again, if you are into psychological thrillers like me, you more than likely will enjoy this book for that aspect alone. The second to last thriller that I have here is The Last Flight by Julie Clark. So I actually read this not too long ago and I buddy read this with my bookstagram buddy named Angela and I'm going to talk more about this in my recent reads video that I have planned. So definitely stay tuned for more of my thoughts on this book, but I will go into the synopsis and give my brief thoughts. <laughs> so this is actually a story that follows two women, one named Claire and one named Eva, but you really get to follow the POV of Claire. So Claire is married to this rich, high profile politician, but behind closed doors he is very abusive and very manipulative towards Claire. So Claire is desperately looking for a way out and trying to escape this life because she does not want to be in this situation anymore, of course. So she ends up formulating this really well thought out and meticulous plan of escape that does involve an airport and her boarding a flight. But unfortunately, once she gets to the airport her plans do fall apart and now she's desperate and trying to figure out how she's going to get away from her husband because it's only a matter of time before he finds her since he does have a lot of resources and money but she ends up crossing paths with this woman named Eva and Eva is also looking to escape her own life and her own demons. So her and Claire end up making a deal and they decide to switch flights and essentially switch lives. So Claire ends up boarding Eva's flight and Eva ends up boarding Claire's flight. But unfortunately Eva's plane ends up going down and so now Claire has to assume Eva's identity and face and confront the demons that Eva was facing before she left her hometown. And the story pretty much takes off from there. So everything that I just mentioned is in the synopsis so I did not give anything away way but this book was an easy five out of five stars it was so captivating so immersive and just so beautifully written and well written to be honest i really enjoyed this plot very fresh and unique in my opinion um so i really enjoyed claire's character to be honest i felt for her i raged for her and i was rooting for her every step of the way i was also rooting for eva too because i wanted eva to of course escape the past that she was running from but it's really interesting because both of these women couldn't be any more different yet here they are on this collision course and just trying to deal with the hands that they were dealt essentially and it's just really really sad you can feel the desperation and the need for survival by any means necessary through Clark's writing style it is phenomenal I literally could feel the dread and the anxiety that both Eva and Claire but mainly Claire was facing when she was trying to outsmart her husband or trying to be three steps ahead of him to make sure that he didn't catch her you know I definitely recommend picking this up if you are into empowering thriller so in terms of just like the female MC being empowered to control of her life and just trying to get out of a shitty situation please keep in mind that this does have themes of domestic abuse because Claire is escaping an abusive man and relationship so definitely look up trigger warnings for this but I still love this book with everything in me and I will be thinking about this and the ending for this for a long long time because it was bittersweet it was bittersweet the last thriller that I have here should be no surprise but it is no exit by Taylor Adams so I'm not going to go into full detail about this you guys already know my thoughts on this book if you have watched my videos consistently this is my favorite thriller at this point of all time um but i will just give a synopsis so this does follow a young college student named darby thorne and darby is actually on her way home to visit her sick mother because her mother is unfortunately dying from cancer so darby is trying to make her way back home in the middle of a raging snowstorm and her car isn't the best so she decides to pull over to this rest stop and once she gets to this rest stop she goes inside and she notices that there are four other people in this rest stop but she doesn't really pay them any mind she goes in there to use the bathroom as well as get a cup of coffee and then once she you know gets settled she ends up going outside to see if she can get some cell reception and once she's out 
out there, she hears screams coming from the trunk of one of the other occupants' cars. And when she looks, you know, in the trunk slash in the back of this person's car, she notices a little girl trapped in a cage. And so now Darby has to figure out how she's going to get herself as well as this little girl out of this really scary situation alive and the story pretty much takes off from there so very similar to rock paper scissors in terms of the atmospheric tone of this book so if you love snowy isolated thrillers this is i feel like as snowy and isolated as you can get so hence the title no exit it is very difficult for darby or for anybody to get in and get out of this rest stop area but phenomenal book definitely recommend picking this up if you have not read it yet if you are into thrillers and if you are a lover of thrillers then i definitely think you will like this book this really does focus more so on the aftermath of the kidnapper reveal. It doesn't really lead to the buildup of the kidnapper. It again focuses on the aftermath and how Darby is going to escape and survive. So really enjoyed this one. I did watch the movie on Hulu and I did rate that a 7 out of 10. It was good but there were certain things about it that that I was a little bit confused by and didn't really like but I'm not gonna get into my full thoughts on the movie but yeah I definitely recommend the book though 100%. If you have to choose between this and the movie read the book because the book is so much better. Moving on to horror. So I actually started to get into horror books not too long ago and I'm still not fully immersed into the genre because I am a scaredy cat through and through. I don't watch horror movies at all so I'm surprised I even read horror books to be honest but I have found ones that I do like and I do enjoy and they're not super super gory so that's a win in my book. The first book that I have here is actually a Stephen King novel and it is The Long Walk. So I will try to show this as best as I can. My ring light is kind of glaring off of it a little bit so I apologize but this book was phenomenal. I have never read anything like this before. So this is actually considered a psychological slash dystopian horror which is like the main reason why I enjoyed this book I'm pretty sure. But this follows a group of 100 boys and they have to participate in this event known as the long walk. And the long walk is essentially this event where 100 boys have to walk for miles and miles and miles until there can only be one left standing. So they can cross state lines. Like I mentioned, there can only be one boy standing. So there are rules to this walk. So if you sit, if you stop, if you stumble, if you trip, or if you fall underneath the like walking limit slash speed limit that they require you to walk, you will get three warnings. And after the third warning, you die essentially. So that is how they go from having 100 boys to one in the end. The book was not only emotionally and mentally exhausting and taxing, but it was also physically taxing and exhausting. Um, Stephen King has such a profound way of really letting you get into the characters heads as well as just connecting to the characters. Like I mentioned there is 100 boys but you do follow a specific group of boys and our main character his name is Ray you follow him more specifically in what's going on in his head and you also get to follow his observations of the other boys that he surrounds himself with throughout this journey and it is just so heartbreaking to be honest because in the beginning of the book everyone of course is you know in their right state of mind they are very sane and they are they're feeling good they're feeling good they're very optimistic about this walk which you know how can you be but they are 16 year old boys so but they're very optimistic about this walk everyone is like i'm gonna win i'm gonna win but as the story progresses you really start to see and witness everybody's mental deterioration especially our main character ray you start to see him decline mentally pretty rapidly and it is so heartbreaking like I mentioned because these boys are only 16 they're boys so it's really sad because you could tell in another life or if they weren't in this situation that they would be the best of friends they would probably hang out they would probably play video games together but because they're in this hellish situation you know that that's never going to happen there can only be one person left standing at the end of this in terms of horror it is definitely horrifying. I can definitely see why Stephen King is so well regarded and why he is known as one of the, you know, pioneers in terms of modern day horror books because wow, wow. It does get gory at certain points because of course people are getting killed if they don't follow the rules within this long walk. There are gross and grotesque scenes in here so definitely keep that in mind but I feel like you're gonna get that of course in any horror book but especially a Stephen King novel but yeah it doesn't it doesn't lack in that regard I will say that but in terms of the psychological aspect of this it is just so daunting because again you witness everybody slowly and at certain points rapidly deteriorating mentally but also just knowing that the person that does end up winning this long walk doesn't really win it's a lose-lose for them because they witness all of the people that were around them die in such brutal and violent and horrific ways especially people that they have become friends with or at least allies with on this journey they're in this very frazzled and disheveled and distressed state of mind because they were walking for hours and hours and days on end and now you just want them to abruptly stop because they won like no 
so you can obviously tell that the winner of this is going to suffer psychological trauma and physical trauma for the rest of their life they're going to be trapped in this constant never-ending cycle of trauma and it is just it's heartbreaking i could write a whole dissertation on this book because i have never thought so much about a book after i read it as much as i have this one there are so many things that can be said about this so many discussions that can be had in terms of just again why do we put ourselves in certain situations that we know are not good for us why do we stick certain things out you know again and then also our responses to trauma whether that's physical or emotional there's just so many discussions that could be had about this book but this was my first Stephen King novel and it certainly will be my last I definitely do plan on reading The Shining next because I'm very interested in that book but The Long Walk was my first book by Stephen King and I'm so glad that I chose this one because I still think about this book to this day. Next book that I have here is When the Reckoning Comes by Latanya McQueen. So I actually talked about this in a few of my videos, but it is a great book. So this actually follows a young black woman named Mira who ends up fleeing her segregated hometown when she was pretty young. And she decides to return back to this hometown because one of her old childhood best friends, a white woman named Celine, is actually getting married. But Celine is getting married on this plantation that was transformed into this vacation slash like resort type of destination and Mira is of course disturbed by this news but she decides to go because she wants to try to rekindle her friendship with Celine because they did grow apart since Mira ended up leaving when she was young so she does want to try to rekindle their friendship and figure out where it went wrong and Mira also wants to reconnect with her other best friend named Jesse who is a black man so Mira decides to go to this wedding she gets there she realizes that the venue is a lot more disturbing than she thought because there is an all-black staff that caters this wedding as well as serving all of the guests so performing in reenactments where they are dressing up and acting as if they are domestic workers or enslaved people so again Mira is very disturbed by this as the days were on Mira starts to experience strange visions as well as just noticing creepy and spooky and paranormal things happening because the ghosts of the enslaved people start to enact their revenge on Celine and their guests i.e when the reckoning comes so this book does have a lot of social commentary in here that I'm involves slavery as well as post-slavery as well as just race culture identity in America and what it really means when we decide to not reckon with or acknowledge the past. Tani McQueen is actually a phenomenal writer this is her debut novel and you would have never thought it because the way that this is written and the story that is told is brilliant this was executed so well I'm not gonna lie in the beginning like I want to say about like 50% of the book at least in the very beginning is very slow burn so if you're not into slow burn horror or thriller books definitely keep that in mind but I still think that everyone who comes across this and if you enjoy the horror genre I definitely think you should pick this up regarding the topics that are explored in here but also the creepy and paranormal and horrific aspect of this book you do get the literary and literal sense of horror and fear when it comes to you know slavery and Jim Crow and racism and white supremacy of course all of those are terrifying and horrifying within their own right but you also get the actual paranormal and spooky and creepy imagery and descriptions that McQueen weaves throughout the entire story. There are so many different hallucinations and visions that Mira experiences that I was genuinely scared to the point where I had to sleep with the light on for a few nights when I was reading this book because I was actually scared and did not want to go to sleep. That's how terrifying this book was for me. So yes, definitely recommend this one if you have not picked this one up yet because I cannot say enough good things about this book. The next two books that I have here are actually classics and I think they're both considered gothic horror but the first book that I have here is The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. So I actually read this last year and I fell in love with the story. So this actually follows a man or a phantom named Eric and Eric is known as the Phantom of the Opera. So he actually resides at the bottom or in the basement of the opera house and he will make his presence known if he feels like he has to. So Eric actually has this like contractual agreement with the owners of the opera house and what this agreement is is that these owners essentially just have to meet Eric's needs like specific needs as Eric likes to watch like you know the shows that happen in the opera house so they reserve a specific box for Eric they also make sure that Eric has um certain like treats and certain just things that again really interest Eric and appeals to his needs as long as these owners fulfill their contractual agreements Eric will not terrorize the guest or the opera house or sabotage any of the plays that take place in the opera house but if they fall through on their contractual agreements or if someone tries to intervene he he will unleash his revenge and torment and terrorize the guests in the opera house. On the flip side, you also follow two other characters, one named Christine Daae, and I think the other character's name is Raul. So Christine is actually known as one of the most like pro prolific and like profound opera singers when it comes to this opera house in particular. So a lot of people really look forward to, you know, hearing Christine sing because she does have a very beautiful voice. And Eric 
aka the phantom is very invested in christine to the point where he does develop an obsession with christine so he does look out for her but you can also tell that he is in love with her and he wants christine to be his wife but christine ends up rekindling this childhood friendship slash relationship with raul and obviously pisses off eric and then the story pretty much takes off from there so this story is about revenge it's about love it's about heartache it's about rejection it's about music the story really does have it all gaston rose writing is so melancholic and so atmospheric you definitely do get the those gothic horror vibes as well as just those creepy and unsettling and melancholic vibes that are woven throughout this story it was brilliantly done i cannot say enough great things about it if you're interested in reading more classics or if you're looking to get into classics and you enjoy the horror genre i definitely think you will like this book because it is very accessible even though this book is translated from french i think that a classics beginner could access this book very well the book was really good it kept me entertained it's hooked from the beginning all the way until the end the last classic that i have here is the picture of dorian gray by oscar wilde so this this book I actually mentioned in my top 10 favorites books of 2021 video. I will leave that linked up above or down below in the description box. This book was so so good. So this actually follows a young beautiful charming man named Dorian Gray and Dorian is very naive. He hasn't been hardened by the world yet. One day he decides to get his portrait painted and when he does get his portrait painted he takes a look at the portrait and looks at it with a sort of disgust and disdain. He starts to have these internalized thoughts about how he wishes that he could remain beautiful and young forever whereas this painting could get old and decrepit and ugly as time goes on and he says this out loud and he doesn't realize that when he says this out loud it's actually a wish in the making and the wish comes true so Dorian realizes that whenever he does something that is sinful or when he does something that is not morally correct this painting starts to get ugly and battered and bruised and again decrepit but nothing actually happens to Dorian's actual self so he still remains youthful and beautiful but his painting gets ugly and decrepit as time goes on so once Dorian starts to realize that he starts to wild out he starts to sin like crazy he becomes morally corrupt and you can just tell that he has become hardened by the world and by society the painting gets uglier and uglier by the day but the guilt starts to eat dorian alive and the story pretty much takes off from there like i said about every other single book phenomenal five out of five stars i loved every single thing about this book if you enjoy horror i definitely think you will enjoy this book it was a wild ride the ending was absolutely insane i will say that this book does get very violent at certain points like very very violent and Oscar Wilde does not shy away from the violent and brutality of certain chapters so definitely keep that in mind this book was actually also considered a scandal and I think it was banned at one point back then because because of how violent it was but also because of the social commentary in here because Oscar Wilde does critique what was going on in 19th century London and I think even America at certain points so he does not shy away from any of those topics he does call out a lot of things that are unfair when it comes to upper echelon um, London society and you know the people that inhabit it so yes just so many great talking points about this book this book does deal with topics like vanity aging what it means to age and why society treats aging as a crime and also talks about moral corruption it talks about sinning this book is very accessible just like the phantom of the opera I'm pretty sure you have heard many people say how beautiful oscar wilde's writing is and i can attest to that his writing was so compelling and so beautiful i genuinely enjoyed reading it because his writing and his prose was just phenomenal so yes just pick it up if you haven't already last book that i have here is actually an honorable mention and it technically is a thriller but honestly i think this should be a horror book and i will get into it a little bit but the last book that i have here is the chalk man by cj tudor this actually follows eddie and his friends in 1986 and they're on the verge of adolescence but they still are considered kids and they pretty much spend their days biking and just hanging out and doing kid things um until one day they actually find a series of chalk men leading into the woods and once they follow these chalk men all the way into the woods they stumble upon a decomposing body of a young girl so of course they go to their parents they tell their parents about it and the cops are called now the town is on high alert because they do think that there is a serial killer on the loose but then fast forward into 2016 so now eddie and his friends are in their adulthood and they pretty much went their separate ways they don't really talk to each other anymore until they all receive these letters from the killer pretty much letting them know that this isn't over and that they will be back so now Eddie has to try to reconnect with his old group of friends to try to figure out who this person is 
what do they want and the story pretty much takes off from there this is a very short book as you can see it is really not that long at all but i'm still thinking about this book to this day i read this i want to say maybe back in november of last year and i have not stopped thinking about it since i ended up rating this i think a 4.5 out of 5 stars and the only reason why i didn't give it a full 5 out of 5 is because it was just a little bit too gory for me which like i should have known but this book was classified as a thriller it's where the mistake lies this should definitely be considered a horror novel because this book gets dark and I'm talking about really really dark at certain points there are a lot of trigger warnings in here so definitely look it up not know that the story was going to go in that direction I was not aware of that at all so definitely look up trigger warnings for this book because there are a lot but yeah this story got really really dark really really quickly it scarred me and it honestly I feel like this is one of those books that has scarred me the same way that the long walk has scarred me this book has scarred me <laughs> but I do think that if you are not into horror or if you are looking to get into horror I think that this is a perfect segue into it I feel like this is like that book that bridges the gap between dark and intense thrillers and like horror books honestly I feel like this is the perfect segue into this because again there are just so many different topics in here that I feel like should just be in a horror book or should be classified as a horror book to be honest ending definitely threw me off but I was still shocked by it and I did not see it coming at all so for that I have to stand I do appreciate when thriller authors you know can surprise me because when it comes to thrillers they do follow a certain trope a certain formula so it is so it can get pretty difficult to surprise a regular like thriller reader but this one definitely threw me off kilter I will say that I do plan on reading more by CJ Tudor I know that she has a few other books out but I have not picked them up yet because this book I'm still thinking about and it still scarred me and if those books are anything like this one I know I'm still gonna need some time I'll end up picking up more of her books because this one was really good I enjoy the writing style in here for the most part there was actually a very creepy scene in here and a very gross scene as well it can be attributed to Tudor's writing style but the creepy scene that I'm talking about was just so horrifying and I could actually visualize it and it really did something to me like i mentioned before definitely look up trigger warnings because you will need it for this book i do not recommend going into this without knowing anything please make sure you look up those warnings because i wish i would have I really do. Alright y'all and those are my all-time favorite thriller and horror books as of right now. I will be filming a part two or an updated video to this because I will be discovering new thriller and horror books as the months go by of course but for right now those are my favorites. <laughs> so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me my channel out and lastly please make sure you follow me on bookstagram as well as storygraph. I always leave that information linked down below as well as at the end of the video. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.